Good morning, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. Oh my god, story. So this morning when I woke up, I walked into this room and basically last night I was just sitting on this sofa reading with this blanket and I just left it there with my laptop kind of propped open and when I woke up and came into this room first thing, it looked so much like a human being. <laughs> sitting there, my heart sank. Like that was the biggest wake up call of all time. I think because the laptop was propped up too, it just looked like there was a person sitting on my sofa. And at 7 a.m. this morning, that was not <laughs> what I was expecting. So anyway, that woke me up, that, <laughs> for sure. That was one way to make me alert and uh, freaked out, first thing. Anyways, today I thought I would take you on another New York City book shopping trip, because I love showing you more independent bookstores around this city. And so today I have two things that I need to acquire. Number one is another book by a trans author because this week on BookTok and Bookstagram and BookTube there is a trans rights readathon. I'm gonna leave all the links down below. There's like donation links to support trans rights, but really the point of this week is to amplify trans voices and put everything else on hold and just focus on reading books by trans writers or featuring trans characters. And so I have one book that fits the criteria, which is Nevada by Imogen Binney. So this is my next read. It kind of follows the road trip tradition that was started by Jack Kerouac with his book On the Road, but it's written by a trans author and about a trans protagonist who is described as the quintessential late twenties punk rock trans girl blowing up her life and making friends on the road or in the parking lot. So I feel like this sounds so good. So that's on my reading list, but I know there's loads more amazing trans fiction. And I also wanted to support a trans owned bookstore. I think its full title is Blue Stockings Cooperative, but it is this really amazing bookstore, which has a great selection of queer literature. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to find something really special there. And then also my other requirement for this book shopping is I'm going on a trip to Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan. And I have loads of books by Korean and Japanese authors, but I don't have anything by a Taiwanese author. And I really like trying to read books by authors from the country that I'm in when I'm there. And so I would really like to read a book by a Taiwanese author. So I'm gonna go to McNally Jackson, which is a bookstore in kind of like Nolita kind of area because their bookshelves are arranged by country or by region. And I remember very clearly that they have a Taiwanese section because I've looked at it before. So I think I know what book I'm gonna get but I'm gonna have a read of some blurbs and decide, but I thought I would take you along with me. So enough of the chit chat, let's go, and there'll be a book haul at the end of the video. But for now, let's do a little musical montage of the bookstores. to the shopping trip on a mission and the mission is complete because I got everything that I was planning to get and only one extra book. Only one. Do you know the self-restraint <laughs> that I showed today to only come away with one extra book that I wasn't planning on getting originally? I framed that like it's an achievement and it's... <laughs> It's the bare minimum. Anyway, so I have three books that I want to show you and tell you about in this little book haul. Firstly, this is the Taiwanese book that I picked up. It is called Ghost Town. It's by Kevin Chen. Honestly, this was the Taiwanese book that I had in mind, but it was actually the only Taiwanese book that I could see. So, um, kind of worked out perfectly, I guess. That, that made my choice much easier. Um, cause you know me, you know that I would have come away with like all of them. So it's pretty good. 
if they just had one Taiwanese book, because like my suitcase is not that big. Told in a myriad of voices, both living and dead, and moving through time with deceptive ease, Ghost Town is a mesmerizing story of family secrets, countryside superstition, and the search for identity amid a clash of cultures. Refusing to play the role his conservative, parochial Taiwanese parents have cast him in, Keith Chen escapes to cosmopolitan Berlin in the hopes of finding acceptance as a young gay man. Set over the course of a single day, the day of the Ghost Festival, the novel begins a decade later when Keith has just been released from prison in Germany and has returned home. With his parents gone, his six siblings married, mad, or dead, there is little left for him there. Or so he thinks. As the story unfolds, Keith reveals more about the events that shaped his family life, the ghosts haunting his hometown, and the truth behind the crime he committed in Germany. That is Ghost Town. That is so intriguing, right? I want to know everything. I feel like this is going to be such a fascinating book to read and so different, I think, to anything else I've ever read before. So I'm intrigued to read Ghost Town. We need another light. It's getting dark. Okay, I'm back. Next, these are the two books that I bought in Blue Stockings Cooperative. It's such a sweet bookstore. They actually have a free little library within the bookstore. So you can go in and swap your books for other books that people have left, which is a really cool and sustainable and free way of reading more books. So I love that. They also have a really sweet little cafe, um, a really nice seating area, and they sell coffees for like one pound. I mean, one dollar. So it's a really cool bookstore to go and support. So this is the book that I went in for. This is the book I had my eye on and I found it in the YA section. This is by Kaysen Callender and it's called Felix Ever After. Felix Love has never been in love. I see what they did there. Their surname is Love and Felix is Latin for happy. I see, I see what you're doing with the name. Anyway, Felix Love has never been in love and yes, he's painfully aware of the irony. He desperately wants to know what it's like and why it seems so easy for everyone but him to find someone. What's worse is that even though he is proud of his identity, Felix also secretly fears that he's one marginalization too many, black, queer, and transgender, to never get his happily ever after. When an anonymous student begins sending him transphobic messages, after publicly posting Felix's dead name, alongside images of him before he transitioned, Felix comes up with a plan for revenge. What he didn't count on with his catfish scenario is it ending in a queer love triangle. Damn, how interesting is that? Also completely unlike anything I've ever read, so I'm very intrigued to read this, and that is my book for the Trans Rights Readathon. And then I also picked up this book. Firstly, I'm obsessed with the title. I love a book with like a sentence title. I love books with long titles, but also I have been eyeing this up for a little while. I keep seeing it in stores and thinking like, I really wanna read that. And also the three descriptions on the front are tight, deep, and hot and I'm here for it. So this is Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl. It's by Andrea Lawler, and this is the description. It's 1993 and Paul Polydorus tends bar at the only gay club in a university town, buzzing with politics and partying. He studies queer theory, has a lesbian best friend, makes zines, but Paul's also got a secret. He's a shapeshifter. Oscillating wildly from riot girl to leather cub, Paul transforms his body and his gender at will as he crosses the country, a journey and adventure through the deep queer archives of struggle and pleasure. Paul takes the form of a mortal girl as a riotous, razor-sharp Bildungsroman whose hero slash heroine winds his way through a world gutted by loss, pulsing with music, and into an array of intimacy and connections. The New Yorker describes it as smut, and the New York Times describes it as difficult to quote in a family newspaper. Sign me up. I'm intrigued to read something that is clearly dirty. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really fun. I think this is gonna be a romp. So yeah, those are the three books that I picked up today. Um, let me know which one you would pick up first. Which one are you most intrigued by? Like I said before, all of the information about the Trans Rights Readathon will be down below, including a donation link. I am gonna be personally donating for every book that I read. It's never too late to get involved. Obviously this is a predetermined week, but we should just be reading trans literature as much as possible all the time. If you're looking for another book to start with, I'd also highly recommend The Transgender Issue by Sean Fay. if you're looking for a non-fiction book. It's kind of a study of the history of trans rights and the treatment of trans people in Britain specifically. It's very insightful, it's incredibly well researched, and it's also very accessible in the way that it explains things. And I think that it has the perfect rebuttal to a lot of contemporary debates around trans lives. It's a really great book. And then in terms of fiction, I would highly recommend Detransition Baby, which is 
a book about two trans people who are in a couple, one detransitions and then ends up in a relationship with someone else. They end up pregnant with a baby and the three of them essentially come together to parent this child. And it's a really nuanced and fascinating conversation around a lot of different questions and ideas surrounding trans identity. Um, the author, Tori Peters, is absolutely incredible, writes so beautifully, but also it's absolutely riveting and has some really insightful conversations and I think it's really worth the read. So it just like blew my mind reading all of these different ideas. Um, so yeah, those are the two recommendations I would give you. Hopefully by the end of the week, I'll be able to share my reviews of Nevada and Felix Ever After. And I love you all loads. Have the best day. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.